Hey there, Taylor. It's time to fasting by neuroplasticity. The brain's incredible ability to rewire itself. Think of neuroplasticity as a brain's way of remodeling its own architecture in response to our experiences, learning, and even trauma. It's what allows us to remember, adapt, and recover. But here's the twist. Sometimes the very flexibility can go out. Leading to mental health challenges like depression, schizophrenia, PTSD, and anxiety. So buckle up as we explore how this dynamic process can both help and hinder our minds. First off, neuroplasticity involves a bunch of processes like strengthening or weakening synapses. Those tiny connections between neurons, spraying new dendrites, generating new neurons and reorganizing entire circuits. Under normal conditions, these mechanisms fuel our ability to learn new skills for memories and regulate emotions. But when things get disrupted, say due to genetic factors or environmental stressors like chronic stress or trauma, these plastic changes can turn maladaptive. Let's talk about the molecular level. Imagine your brain's plasticity toolkit. Two key players are LTP and LTD, long term potentiation and depression. Think of LTP as turning up the volume on certain neural signals, strengthening those connections, while LTD is like turning the volume down, weakening them. These processes depend on activity dependent signaling through receptors like NMDA, calcium ions, and kinases. Normally, this fine tuning helps us encode memories and adapt behaviors, but if these signaling pathways go haywire, it can lead to circuits that are either overly excitable or too weak, setting a stage for mental health issues. Another important piece is BDNF, or brain derived neurotrophic factor. Think of it as a fertilizer for your neurons. It promotes growth, survival, and synaptic plasticity. When BDNF levels drop or seeing depression, the brain's ability to adapt and heal diminishes. Interestingly, environmental factors, epigenetic change, and gene expression can all influence BDNF and other molecular cascades pathways, shaping how our brain responds to life challenges. And it's not just neurons, glial cells like microglia and astrocytes are key players too. They help prune necessary synapses and maintain balance. But chronic inflammation and neuroinflammation can throw a wrench into the system, impairing synaptic remodeling neurogenesis, which may contribute to various psych- psychiatric conditions. Treatments like exposure therapy aim to recalibrate these circuits from when healthier plasticity. Here's a quick summary. Different disorders hit different brain regions with different plasticity alteration. For instance, increased neurogenesis in depression, excessive pruning in schizophrenia, or hyperactive fear circuits in PTSD and anxiety. These techniques like TMS or DBS and lifestyle changes to the next slide all aimed at promoting healthy plasticity. The idea is to help the brain rewire itself in a positive direction, fostering resilience and recovery. Looking ahead, personalized medicine is on the horizon. Thanks to advances in neuroimaging and molecular diagnosis, we might soon identify early signs of maladaptive plasticity and tailor intervention accordingly. Imagine treatments customized to your brain's unique wiring, moving us beyond one size fits all approaches. Of course, challenges remain in relationship between stress plasticity and synapse. Symptoms is, is complex, and plastic changes can be both good and bad. Plus, individuals does mean that w- works for one person but not for another. But with ongoing research into grain biology, neuroscience, and clinical insights, we're making strides towards smarter and more effective treatments.